All right, we are back. Cosmic adults are back. How are you feeling today, Ian? I am the other half of the cosmic adults, and I'm feeling pretty good. It's very early here in Estonia today when we're recording this, but it's um, also the sun is coming up. I can see just about, so it's freaking awesome at the same cool. time. That's a good moment in time, I feel like, the sunrise. I feel like it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're here for another episode. And one thing I wanted to tell everyone, because I don't know if everyone knows this, but like, so our episodes are not edited. Like, we don't take stuff out. We just like go for it. And so basically, you're like watching live TV, but like yes. not very dirty material basically <laughs> it's raw <laughs> it's very raw <laughs> raw emotional and truly like we don't know what the heck we're gonna say until we start talking and that's kind of that's kind of our jam it's kind of how we roll this so, yeah. is how we do it this is how we I do it i think that's a like a time for a pop reference because that's a pop song rap song mm -hmm. this is how we do mm -hmm. da, da, da. yeah uh 50 cent the game uh, go check that out if you were born if you're if you're old like me uh, you know probably Dude, not that song. <laughs> i was thinking about that today and it was just like it's seriously like for anyone under 25 like just to let you know if you're listening to this it's like all of a sudden one day around 27 28 you're like <gasps> I'm old. I am no longer relevant. I don't know any of the new... I don't want, know what the teenagers are saying. I don't know what they're talking about. Nothing. And then you have to... Now it's social media, so <laughs> luckily. But, you know, you, you got to do research. Like, I never thought I would use Urban Dictionary as much as I do. And I use it a lot. Yeah, guys, if you're old... Um, I have a, actually have a good pointer for you because i have um <laughs> not even joking I'm, I'm not even joking but it sounds like a joke but i have a good pointer um i have a friend he is 21 years old and he is probably single-handedly you know keeping my feet in the um, i don't know modern pop culture game if you oh, want to wow. call it that yeah and i know a lot about you know what is happening in pop culture just because i have that friend and you know i i, I also recommend it because you will know how these people think feel what they you know think is important in life and so on so on and so forth i think it's a really important thing in general to be you know connected between let's say generations and uh, i'm let's say if you're like 30 40 whatever you know have a friend who's 60 as well again good freaking thing to do to understand these people okay this is actually pro life advice that's literally is... that's pro life advice i that's that is some of the best advice ever like truly no like when i was in my 20s i was hanging out with people who were like in their 50s because i was like yeah all the people around me don't know shit about what they're doing i need to hang out with people who do know shit about what they're doing and can actually mentor me and guide me yeah fuck yeah i i totally <laughs> agree i yeah. like that yeah yeah hey thanks for that ian that's cool <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then the other thing that I wanted to say is that we are we also do we try and keep these episodes like on the shorter side so you're not hanging out listening to them for like 10 hours, but also we're trying to bring you the most information, the best information that we possibly can at all times. So, sometimes it's a little longer than we want, but hey, we 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 roll in with it, right? Mhm. Mm okay. well, that's another uh Limp Bizkit song, rolling. Anyway, is it? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm aging you a little bit. I think Limp Bizkit. Come on, Limp Bizkit. You know, Limp I never Biscuit. listened really to Limp Bizkit. Like maybe like one or two songs. Like I definitely had Big Shiny Tunes, like for sure those CDs. Christ, but... How is this possible? I'm sorry. 
This I'm is, a freak. Like, if it, I'm a weirdo. I, mean, <laughs> I don't belong here. <laughs> if you, did you use that right? You're a freak. I'm a weirdo. Did you use that right now on purpose? You know, I these did. are song lyrics. I did. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> Thank God. I was, otherwise, I would be like, we're gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what the hell is happening? Faint. Ian's done. He's out. (laughs) Oh my god. Yeah. Seriously, didn't you didn't listen? We're good. We can be friends still. I think. No, I didn't really. Give me a popular Limp Bizkit song. What's a popular Limp Bizkit song? Rolling. (laughs) My generation. (laughs) Dude, sorry. Mission Impossible. I'm a disappointment. Take a look around. No. Nookie. Oh no. Um, I'll do it all for the nookie. <laughs> no, <laughs> no blank, I'm a failure. Pages. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, should we get into um, the week, do you think, maybe? So there. that I can <laughs> stop being embarrassed. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, just... so we're looking at the week of March 27th to April 2nd. And from what I understand, this is a pretty loaded week, yeah? And, like, we're rolling in to some even more loaded weeks coming up in April, so... Get ready, guys. I mean, we can we can definitely say that it's a bit of a loaded week, but we're building up to a lot of things that are happening in, in, a, in a big scheme of... In the big scheme of things... And mm-hmm. we're building up definitely, guys, for the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. I think we're going to mention this one, you know, for the next at least two episodes Probably a or lot. something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, like, kind of a basic thing about astrology, uh, maybe, is, maybe to add, is that <laughs> obviously some planets are closer to the sun, so they move a lot faster. <clears throat> but Jupiter and Neptune are further out. So they move a lot slower. So it's sort of like when these types of planets kind of can are conjunct or they when they have movement, it's sort of it's a it's a bigger deal for a longer period of time. Exactly. It, in, the, in the effects we feel, you guys, we've been feeling this and this build up has been happening, in, I would say, from end of December last year and, and literally January and February. And um, we're building it up, and now, we're, especially beginning of April, we're going to really, really start to feel it. Um, hmm. Should we just discuss it, or <laughs> I don't know? <laughs> I think we should wait. I think we should okay, wait because I don't know. I think. Let's have a look at what March 27th has to bring in, because we're going to have plenty of time to talk about Jupiter and Neptune, our friends, mm-hmm. our pals, way out there in the sky. I mean, if, if you're spiritually, you know, let's say minded or inclined, let's say, or pulled towards those areas, I mean, these are your planets, definitely. These are very much your planets. And if you are like my friend Mercedes here, Stop. I mean, you're all about that jupiter and neptune because that pisces you know traditionally still ruled by jupiter neptune you know modern ruler of pisces so it's a big one for you definitely it's happening in your sign as well in your sun sign so that's a big sure one. is sure is mm-hmm. i've been yeah i've been you know honestly i've been <laughs> as of today i don't know as of today, though, I've been kind of killing it lately. Like, I've been doing good. <laughs> Intuition's just, like, on point. Things are, like, going in my life. It's it's pretty neat. Things are... What I'll say is that things are going my way. Like, it's not a fight. It hasn't been a struggle lately. It's just been like, oh, yeah, I want this. I want that. And it's just starting to move. I'm like, okay, let's go. I mean, enjoy that. Jupiter will definitely help you. And if you guys, if you know, <clears throat> if you're out there in your Pisces, let's say, uh, this is a general advice. If you have anything in fixed signs, you're going, you're getting, you know, mm. pretty brutally hammered. Um, <laughs> what are the fixed signs again? The fixed signs are, let's go from the beginning, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. 
So, oh. you know, if you have both, you're you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, oh, I'm getting happy. Mm. You know, it, it can be the thing as well. But, you know, okay. guys, if you have Pisces in your chart, sun, ascendant, I would say ascendant, sun or moon in that order, you're going to be getting the blessings of, let's say, Jupiter a lot more than the other signs this year. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of a break when Jupiter goes into Aries during the summer. But after, again, the end of year, it will be again in Pisces, so we'll, you will again feel it. So, receive those blessings, um, like Mercedes just shared here, and, and enjoy that ride, definitely. Yeah, I mean, any enjoyment we can get <laughs> of the world <laughs> right now, like, I would <laughs> say, um, yeah, do the work in your mind so you can receive it, because you deserve it. Yeah um march 27th what what's up on march 27th for me for us like yep, for us like way back in time um here in canada it's mm -hmm. gonna be sunday mm -hmm. oh so i'll, I'll go first so <clears throat> we have a bit of a thing happening mercury you know finally having had its stint in Pisces, for me, it's been like like four or five days. I'm already like, oh, God, okay. I can't take this anymore. Ian, <laughs> I, I do not feel sorry for you at all. Zero. Zero. <laughs> oh, my God, you poor thing. Five days? I'm five days Mercury in Pisces. Try, try almost 30 years. Try that out. I know. I know. <laughs> And I'm Anyways. dealing with injustice. <laughs> about I'm, me. I feel like I've been very like the sun is shining on me. Let's talk about me. But it's a good thing as well. But like I'm not doing it justice, guys. Mercury in Pisces, like like we said in in I think last weeks or something. Like it's there's so many good things about Mercury in Pisces. You know it. You know sometimes it just happens that during the time period when Mercury is in Pisces, you have to do a bunch of these you know left brain things, and then it can get a little bit heavy. You know, but if you're like a, let's say a creative person, a spiritual you know guide, teacher, intuitive healer, <gasps> you know these are good things uh, to have Mercury in Pisces four so just let's not do let's not say like mercury is bad in pisces yes it's some difficulty there but mercury is moving into the sign of aries which is a fire sign this means our you know minds will you know pick up it's it will get very much faster in our minds the thoughts will become very fast the communication can become very fast as well and and the, let the, let's say the left brain material administrative you know tasks that we do become a lot easier and we do them faster as well and there there can be a let's say a momentary increase in those as well like aries is, is quite extreme sometimes so it can would be you, like whoop. would yeah. you say that like whatever left brain stuff that you did when mercury was in pisces communication wise could be pushed forward with the aries energy totally totally because mercury in pisces can be a little bit like I'm not saying things directly, but Mercury in Aries is like, oh, I'm all about, it's like almost too direct. I'm saying things frank. into your face. Yeah, literally nice. frank. Well, that kind of like brings it into sort of what I picked up in the energy, which was to describe it, the word would be game. Hmm. There is a very playful energy, yeah. I would say as well. And it's like, it's an excited energy. I also see, like, when I think about, like, when I focus on it, I see a chessboard, and I, but I, so I feel like it's a game, but it's also very strategic. I think Aries gets a lot of um, hate a bit for being Aries, or, I mean, you know, I'm talking about sun sign, but I think there's, what I've learned with Aries is, yes, Aries is, you know, Mercedes say Aries again. Aries. <laughs> Aries. Aries. Aries is like <laughs> You can't it just can't help it. I can't help it. Um it is as a sign, I want to say it's a very vulnerable sign. Because you have to have a certain amount of vulnerability 
in order to make decisions and in order to push things forward, in order to be frank and direct, you have to be okay with whatever happens when you say that thing. Yeah. And um, Aries very often is not. Let's 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 be really frank here. What? <laughs> like what? Aries is Aries is like if you say sometimes if you say things to Aries, you, you know they they prefer the directness actually if you have a lot of strength in there. But it, if it's a you know sometimes if it's like very critical, mm, you know they want to be the best. Aries wants to be the best. And if they're not, if somebody says they're not the best, they have to prove that right, wrong. Yeah, it's, it, it affects them. It, it okay. does affect them. Yeah. But, you know, again, things start moving quicker. Let's say business matters, you know, these types of matters. But if there's been some sort of communication, you know, errors or things, you know, things start moving again. Further away. So whenever you said wrong in Pisces, you're gonna have to make up for it when it goes to Terry's. Yeah. Face your <laughs> face the music. Face the music, guys. Here. Face the game. Play the game. Um, yeah, probably have fun. Is there anything in here about fun? Like well, cause it looks like fun. the sun's in Aries. We talked about that. Mm, like there's a there's a weird one here we're building yeah. up as well guys like a shorter one i'm like not an astrologer but i'm looking at the chart right now going hmm i know these symbols a little bit oh uh, you know you know these things okay you say, um let's say you, let's say, say, it. say, it. say, it. say it. <laughs> this is this is exciting energy aries okay. energy whenever so, something moves into aries you know the excitability the energy you know the youthfulness that the, like the little the sun is a little bit more like life force, let's say, but like Mars and Aries, because Mars rules Aries, it's like the physical energy as well. So mm -hmm. now we have the life force here. We have the mind, Mercury here, what we think, what we say, you know, the, the excitability is there. But the other side of the coin here, guys, is the stellium we have. The stellium is what I mean is uh, three or more planets in one sign, and we have it in Aquarius. Now Aquarius, mm, you know, it's not a lot about fun. Let's let's be super honest here. And one of the things that is also happening at the same time is the planet of enjoyment and pleasures is conjuncting Saturn. And we're literally 27th, 28th, we're preparing for that conjunction as well. And that can dampen. That can so this dampen. is <laughs> Venus? This is Venus. Okay. This is Venus. Venus is getting conjunct with Saturn. Saturn. Yeah. Yikes. It's not our favorite ones, guys. Um, so if, what if does this little... mean? What What does this mean? What does it all mean, Basil? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this uh, means basically. Let's. I'll, I'll you know move a little bit further. Um, but this practical in earthly terms. Yeah, coming into the 28th, you know, for some, you know, again, I'm not going to repeat that. For some, it's going to be a little bit sooner, but it can dampen the way, even like the ability to enjoy ourselves, literally. We mm. just harder to enjoy the, you know, the tastes, the sensations, the feelings, the music doesn't sound, into, you know, maybe like if you want to do something like to ground this energy a little bit, you can listen to like old songs like we've been saying here you, know, <laughs> you, can, you can listen to older music definitely or you can paint something also good but it's harder to enjoy things um some issues and difficulties in relationships but like this is the thing with saturn and venus conjunction it's, it's a little bit of a heaviness in in our partnerships and relationships for a short term but right. and money but it can be like no literally... just kidding <laughs> it can like, be let's say if we, if, if we if we talk about money in general it's like it, it, it can be like you need to do an expense or you need to do a rebudgeting or you need to do something mm. along or organize your money there right. reorganize your money or or put it into order or in a relationship for example very simple Maybe there's an issue. Maybe there's a problem. Maybe your par partner is like, you know, f 
facing some some difficulties or you mm -hmm. need to help them right. or even there's problem within between the two of you and you need to fix it you need to organize it and that's saturn as well saturn comes in it's like, like these two meet and say like hmm you need to fix this you need to and it, it is a possibility actually it, through that organization to take that relationship or partnership to the next level as well but what gives us a little bit grief here is this sun and, and mars we're sorry moon and mars conjunction which is a bit of a emotional trigger as well so you know and that's in aquarius there it's an aquarius, aquarius you know ex aquarius is also extremes so there mm -hmm. there can be because there's so many aries much aries <laughs> energy and we're building up also again to the new moon everything has happened here yeah you know, we're, we're getting into it I, I said it was a loaded week. I feel like that's true. <laughs> Emotional um, reactions can happen. Well, because, definitely. okay, so interesting enough, the, intu the intuitive stuff that came through is, get ready for this one, <laughs> hidden monster. That's a good one. I think that's a good one. And I was Really like, good one. I was like, I don't get this. I don't get what this is. But I think, I think, I think, I think, whew, it's kind of like if you haven't been doing your inner work, it's sort of like going to make it very apparent that there is something inside of you that perhaps is not something you want inside of you, in your mind, in your heart, wherever. Yeah. And uh, I think this energy actually can bring it out. Um, you know, let's say 27th, 28th, when we're talking about, you know, Saturn can bring those hardships and suppression even more, but then Mars agitates the moon a little bit here. So we're I already have, Aries. I have a bit of a question. Well, not a bit of a question. It's a question, a full question, mm -hmm. not a piece full of question. question. Um, <laughs> Rick. Okay, so we're, when we have these hard things in astrology like that, are there any, like, especially with this, with Saturn, with, with all the stuff, are there any, like, things we can do to mitigate that energy in our life, in our home, like, remedy it in a way, some type of thing, so that maybe when it hits, we can see it as an observer more than be, like, wrapped up in Saturn's, like, crazy pull? Definitely, I'm glad you asked that because the, one of the things I didn't mention yet is because Venus is a lot about our self worth. Like you're, uh, you know, it's oh. it's also like inner self worth, but it's also like those, not only the deep, you know, I'm worth everything, but it's it's a very you know practical self worth thing here as well. Like you know, what am I worth in the marketplace? What am I? What are my skills doing? You know, w mm -hmm. what do I actually have? And and and. When these two meet, it can really seem like shit. I, you know, I'm I'm a little bit hesitant. I'm I don't know what I'm actually worth. Maybe I'm not worth as much as I thought I was, you know. And the first thing is always you know, to kind of understand these things that these can be coming up. Like, oh, I don't know, uh, am I good enough to do this? You know, basically right. this can come up. Basically, all, uh, like, yeah. The hidden monster, that freaking voice inside that says crappy things about you when all you really yes. should be doing is is loving yourself and loving who you are toads toads my goats i would say goats <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i mean if you want to do something practically here yes listen to some you know you know retro songs the songs that make made you feel good in the you know in the olden times <laughs> but in the times. 1900s but do you know they're <laughs> saying that about us the 1900s people born in the 1900s listen, listen i was born in the 80s so i'm like ancient already so they don't even know what the 80s are but you know, at least you were born in the 90s <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Okay, but sorry. Like, so retro music and like whatever era like, to you feels retro, kind of, or basically like nostalgic, basically. maybe. Exactly. 
like okay. don't get too wrapped up in it but like even look at practically your skills like what do you actually do in the world and what you can do and like make a list you know saturn is also a list and organization so you know virgo and saturn a little bit both make that list right. of what you're actually <clears throat> worth and i think you will you'll be fine because in the past we've also talked about saturn being a very as much as it's hard and dry and bleh, cruel still, even yeah like it's still very loving it's not doing this just because it's doing this because no. to teach you um yes. because it gives a shit about you mm -hmm. um and moon will join them as well guys later in the day so it's okay. it's, it's an emotionally can pretty ugh. can we talk about the moon a little bit moon sure. what does what does the moon represent because we're always talking about moon but what's really a small quick description but well the biggest thing guys to understand about the moon is, is the moon is our emotions and feelings oh. so and if you understand that moon is our emotions and feelings you and you understand the second part that this is an emotional reality this is a, this is all about feeling yes the mind everything we need to address but it's all it's a lot about the emotions of everyone and moon represents that so you're going to if you put these two pieces together you're going to understand why we're constantly talking about the moon because it's literally ev almost daily changing what is happening inside of us what, you know, this is one of the things you can understand about cancers, why cancers are so freaking up and down emotionally, because they're ruled by um, influence in our solar system that moves two and a half, or sorry, changes signs in every two and a half days, approximately. So that's volatile. <laughs> so if someone would have like a bad taste in their mouth about having dated a cancer, that would be what they would say? Just like moody and emotional. <laughs> that's that's a pretty. I would, like if you've been harsh. soured by a that's cancer, harsh. if you've been, <laughs> that would be like the review. I would say just do your best to understand because <clears throat> it, it's you know it's not easy. You know, you, you 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 shift so much during every week, constantly, every day. So imagine that, guys. So give those cancers a little bit of a understanding. Mm. I want to add in here um, a book recommendation because this nice. book absolutely blew my mind. Okay, it's a channeled book. So Jay Z Knight, she channels a being called Ramtha. So this book is called. Um, that elixir called love and i read this book and it absolutely changed my whole outlook on who i am how i relate to other people how i relate to myself how i relate in relationships i mean whether you believe in channeling or not it's still amazing information so it's called that elixir called love and it's by jay-z knight slash ramtha r-a-m-t-h-a so if you pick that book up seriously let it if you and you read it let us know send us a message on instagram or something like that after you read it because i want to know what you think because this whole seriously everything that you're talking about here with like the saturn venus conjunction all of this the the hidden monster the voices within all that stuff freaking this book will like s solve all your problems guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed <laughs> just kidding not guaranteed i can't do that but um there's this part in it where he talks about um how it, the most heartbreaking thing that he can see with humans as we are is that we have so many voices going on in our mind that are mean to us and say horrible things and there's never been a voice inside that has stood up to those voices that has been like hey no you're not actually bad at everything that you do and you're not undeserving of love and you're not this you actually are the most amazing thing in the world so it changed my perspective quite a bit. So grab Bring it, read it. Bring that voice out. 
Yeah, that's the most, that's the voice to listen to, not the other one. They're all liars. And the crazy thing is, like you were saying, how it's an emotional, like being on this planet, it's an emotional thing. It's so true. But I, I have found that if you are having an emotional reaction to something, you have a lie inside. You are lying to yourself about something. Uh, I would even add um, to that if if there's a very big emotional reaction, usually there's fear as well, yeah, because mm -hmm. usually fear can come from lies. Yeah, because you told yourself ourselves. something. You told yourself. Yeah. Well, someone else put that voice there, probably. Not you. Not your little beautiful soul. No way. Would never do that. 28th is kind of a big day. <laughs> big day of discovery for everyone, I feel like. I mean, they're there, they're there, just there. Use yeah. it. 29th? 29th? What have we got on the 29th? I got uh, feeling small. Feeling small. I mean, I think... I think when we're looking at astrology, we're still t t most often talking about the same thing here because we're s Venus is coming still from Saturn. It's still mm -hmm. close and Moon is entering Pisces. So when, when we put those two together already, it's, it's, it's all about no, because m m v Pisces can be victimhood as well. Unfortunately, no. that's the, the, that's the, <laughs> that's the <laughs> downside of Pisces, let's say. And and we when we're putting when we're coming here from Saturn and, and our self worth has been a little bit you know hammered um, when we can you know like you said make ourselves uh, feel small what, these were the words yes yeah mm -hmm. feeling small there's also like in my mind this profound sort of meaning behind it of like have you ever just contemplated basically being a speck of dust in the whole universe totally almost daily. And <laughs> right like constantly. too much maybe it's like <laughs> someone's yelling at me and i'm like i don't care <laughs> i'm a speck of dust you're also a speck of dust like do you really think that yeah i don't know and then it's like this <laughs> and then all of a sudden you have a mini existential crisis and then you're like mm -hmm. okay bring it back play the game be back in the in the role whatever it, yeah that's kind of <clears throat> what i was feeling with it so guys <laughs> <laughs> i love it. i love it because i'm always like what's about to come out of his mouth i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i mean like this i think like this the the momentary thinking about like you're a speck of dust in this grand scheme you know it, it brings a liberation but if if you like mercedes says you i need to bring out yourself out of it because if you if you start staying stuck with it too much you know you don't really in my mind almost like exist on this planet as well you're kind of like floating too much away somewhere in, in the ethers and you're not doing that you're not doing the work you're not creating you're not making things here and you're not experiencing the things we're here to experience so bring yourself a, back as i'm well. having a deja vu right now and it's kind of freaking <laughs> me out actually because i'm like oh my god i saw this before and my cat was there and oh my god <sighs> so that's kind of cool um yeah i totally agree i totally agree with what you're talking about i think it's important and i think it's also really important to understand <clears throat> that you're here for a reason so you better freaking discover that reason and you better lean in as much as you can while you're here and learn as much as you possibly can while you're here because why not what else are you gonna do hang out and cry <laughs> cancers i'm looking at you cancers <laughs> kidding xoxo this was spoken like or from somebody who probably knows that cancer energy pretty uh -huh. intimately, I would say. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Hey, do you love, okay, I love, I mean, obviously English, English is your second language, yeah? Mm, yeah. Um, I love saying the word perhaps. 
this is something like about <laughs> okay so perhaps it's kind of like a bitchy way to say like maybe yes and also fuck you <laughs> perhaps... that's, a... <laughs> that's a very cancer way of saying things as well i would say perhaps <laughs> perhaps <laughs> So, so bust out the perhaps every once in a while. <laughs> okay, what are we looking at on the 30th of March? Oh. We're getting to the end of March. Like, the energy of March, I feel like it's been a lot. And, the, like, the... Woof, we're coming up. I mean, astrologically, the 30th, really, we just mostly continuing with the same thing but we're in on the 30th <clears throat> really guys 30th 31st we're really building up to the new moon what is happening in Aries which we will cover as well but uh, it's it's a little bit of a um, you know whenever the new moon comes and if you've been listening to our podcast you know it's it's a lot about releasing something before in order to, for us to have room to begin anew so we have this every month oh, that's like poetry yeah. that's like the way that you said that is poetic that's so this is i think a time sorry uh, to shamelessly promote my book because i am a poet i have a published poet book guys go out and buy it <laughs> <laughs> yes yes oh my gosh i'm gonna go, go buy ahead. it can i do it right now can I buy it right now? Okay, I'll do it after. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't already. I always look at it and I'm like, I really want to read that. Okay. Mm. Ian has a way with words. He does. He always, if you're not like, if you haven't been following him, probably you should. <laughs> you probably should. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed you will feel better. Um, funny enough, because when I was focusing on the 30th, the day I, the intuitive cosmic message was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, absolutely no, I think I see. fantastic. <laughs> I love that. I think Wait. I, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, is that, well, I don't know, because obviously not an astrologer, caveat there, but um is that a trine are we trining something here mm. there's a big triangle i don't know depend okay. like uh, what is throwing you off mercedes a little bit is because we are when we're using this software guys if you're listening you can see if you if you're watching on youtube you can see but what is throwing you off? Because we're looking at the natal chart. And in the natal chart, we have the MC oh, and the Ascendant. Oh, God. And we, we can look at these points, obviously, during, let's say, a general reading as well. Let's, especially the MC, the highest point. But it's, it's not like, in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't so much mm. use them, let's say, if we're covering like daily influences. Mm -hmm. I would mostly focus on, let's say, from here to most of these things. Here. Maybe not even these. <laughs> A little bit okay. here. Okay, fair. These, these. Okay, and um, that kind of segues. Remember when we ha talked segue. said segue so many of the times? Okay, so <laughs> segues into the fact that the way that i have learned astrology is exactly this right now is i've asked a million questions i've watched like tons of videos i've taken like i think i took one basic astrology course just on like the archetypes of the signs but that's pretty much it and so this is like listening to this podcast this is a way to learn astrology if you've ever been totally. interested in it before like we talk that's why i always am asking like can you like refresh my mind because i <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'm okay with it but i'm not like a master by any means ian's done like some crazy courses and he's gone like deep into it he's a great teacher a lot i've, I've done a lot and guys if uh, and I'm uh, listen, guys. I'm doing 
still every day I'm learning more and more about astrology. But like this is something, you know, there's always more to learn about here and more observations to make. Because remember, we're in modern times and modern times are changing. And a lot of those things that we that are out there as well are from ancient times. And mm. we're in modern times, so we don't need to just observe as well. Um, and yeah. actually, so just a little note on that. If you ha have a look around at your life, look at the people who are constantly learning and look at the people who have stopped. Mm -hmm. <sighs> What's the difference between them? It's a huge difference. It's Keep a fucking learning. huge even difference. If, even if you master something, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, don't become a douchebag. Don't yeah, become a douchebag. Like a big red douchebag flag. Because a lot of like that weird. I think that's an important one what you said that because because it, I've seen it a lot um with with people who have uh, unfortunately achieved some sort of mastery and maybe that's a very high level of mastery still and they literally become or or are in a place stuck in a place where they're not learning anymore that much about it and they're in a place of judgment towards other people who don't know that as well and you know don't do that very simple uh, mm -hmm. keep learning be humble in this wisdom knowledge that you have already garnered and if you've mm -hmm. garnered and gathered that wisdom and mastery this is your job actually to teach and to give that knowledge to other people not to be on that pedestal and be like oh i know this stuff and uh, blah 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 you can come to me blah, you know like that it's like I, i've seen it and it's not it's not it's not for me i just zone out immediately i just not yeah. for me not well, for i me mean pedestals are a really high place to fall from <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the freaking truth? Yeah, don't fall too far. Okay. Um, anything else about the 31st or the 30th that's like, like you, noteworthy? What, did, what What was the words you said? You said absolutely joy or... Fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Gosh, I want to point to you. This is a very short influence. And we're coming a little bit from the harder, let's say, Seven influences crap. as well. And we're moving into the new moon, which is a lot about release. But there is something momentary here that can really help us with it. Or at least for a second. And that's the moon and Jupiter conjunction. Guys, this is, you know, I've been observing these this year because we're getting a lot of them. Um, you know, every month we're getting a Jupiter and moon conjunction in the sign of Pisces. It's literally for a moment, for a couple of hours, even like a half a day. It's like a feeling like everything is possible. And that's what I think Mercedes here is, is pointing out to like absolutely fantastic. It does feel like that most that's times. Freaking cool. Yeah, it's uh, like last oh, month. I might I even extremely... go as <laughs> when you yeah. go as far as to say it's absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic guaranteed guys guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed on the 30th of march there's going to be a moment that is absolutely fantastic watch out for guaranteed. this moment and carry it with you forward into your life especially i think it's important because with the new moon isn't this a manifesting time too so like just after the new moon when it's starting to build in the sky so carry that energy <clears throat> this is yeah definitely manifesting game but remember remember the tougher part of, about this guys it's a, we're still releasing as well before the manifestation can come and we're getting, mm. going to get into the manifestation and especially again i'm going to repeat this mostly every episode if you have a lot of fixed signs letting go is freaking hard for you and, and there's no sugar coating it yes you can learn it a little bit and, and you know start releasing tad here and tad here but if you are let's say you're let's say more inclined just to hold on to things and that's that the problem here where you need to this is your learning as well okay i would like to actually also speak to that because i think one of the biggest traps with energy healing and changing your life is that you do actually in fact have to let go of your old life in order to have your new life 
Um, this means thoughts, this means people, this means places, this means homes, this means literally everything. Just because you change one thing doesn't mean you have to change everything. But I see this all the time with people who will come for an energy clearing, they'll feel really amazing, and then they'll go back to their really mean husband or their really mean wife that they're not meant to be with. And it's like, you're not going to change that person. You, you're not. You can only live your own life. We are born alone. We die alone. You know, we are, that's it. That's all we got. So what the frick are you doing in between? And you also have to make sure that you're letting go of stuff. The stuff that doesn't serve you anymore, the stuff that's not meant for you, the stuff that maybe you manifested when you were at a certain point in your life that was great then, but then as you grow, you look at it and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Who was I when I manifested this even, right? And it doesn't mean that, like, you're a bad person or anything, but it does mean that you have to learn and grow and change. And I'm going to drop the mic there. <laughs> okay, which is actually, do you have anything else? Because I could also just segue into the next little... I think I need to segue a little bit here. You got it. Okay, um, okay, go, different... go, go, go. <laughs> Guys, if Pop you're your literally... I think this is a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> into literally saying and showing my appreciation towards mercedes as well and guys if you haven't had a session with mercedes i have this is a really um i would say deep experience and it, it does literally help with letting go of matters that you maybe you are having a hard time letting go of so i definitely recommend you book a session with Mercedes and, and if you have these issues and, and you know she will help you out a lot Aww, thank you friend <laughs> so nice cool yeah um oh now I'm oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. now I feel all shy no. <laughs> <laughs> that was so nice <laughs> um okay well Thursday or yeah Thursday um the 31st well, Thursday for me mm -hmm. in Canada. Do your own math mm -hmm. whenever that other time is for you. Um, okay, this and this is really interesting because the the intuitive stuff I was really picking up on this day was daggers was the word that just kept coming. And then also, okay, so there's this thing in healing shamanism stuff when you're going into energy, when you're working with people, when you're you know changing and shifting things. And again, okay, this is maybe this is the first time I've said this, but just keeping in mind whenever I'm doing work, it's not freaking me. It's the big guns. It's the your spirit guides, your team, it's the energy around. It's it's not me. I'm just a witness. I'm backseat just being a channel basically. Hollow bone. Um so, but one of the cool things is that when we're healing a lot of past life stuff, usually it's arrows, daggers, swords, like old types of war stuff um, that are it, like I uh, kind. It kind of looks to me like almost crystallized, but it's like a dark, heavy thing. It'll usually be like a dagger or a sword or a yeah any of those things that I mentioned. Um, <laughs> Ian's going crazy with the mouse around this area on the chart. <laughs> um, I think this is a lot about this. Um, you know, guys, we can say it's a build up already, but I think it, we're in, in this moment, like Mercedes says, you know, the, the sharper things and the weapons and the things that we're really building up right now to the new moon. And, and we should starts mentioning because now moon already moves into aries on the 31st and it really starts moving closer to the sun which means it's a new moon closer to the mercury all in aries and really important guys in this new moon closer to chiron now this our new moon our friend chiron our friend chiron and we're i'm going to just already on our um 
Oops, a little bit too can we, far. Can we talk again about Chiron really quick? What's... Yes, we're, we're going into that. We, we really... went into it before about Chiron but, and what it is, but perhaps there a quick is. little. Now, <clears throat> guys, Chiron for us here on planet Earth talks a lot about the deeper wounding. And um, you, can, you can say deep, deepest of wounds. Personally, I'm not super amazed by that because I think Pluto, <laughs> Pluto and Chiron together are 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 our deepest of wounds. And I I can we can't, you know, if you're astrologically more, you know, maybe you're a student already or whatever, and you're like Chiron is the biggest wounds. Mm, Pluto is as well, guys. Debatable. You know, debatable. Uh, either or, I feel like either it's still, you know, pretty intense. I. Because mm -hmm. when I think about it, it's the story of Chiron that really gets me, right? Like the the mythology behind it, where it's like Chiron is born of not so great circumstances, gets taught all the healing stuff, and then, I don't know, the whole thing, but <laughs> I'm going to just spark notes it. <laughs> Basically, he ends up getting his like liver eaten every day because he's immortal. And so every day his liver gets eaten by a bird. And so obviously he's like constantly wounded every single day of his life. I'm literally, because I don't too much, you know, literally, or I go into myth and mythology as well, guys, at times. And I like to bring that into business, but I, I, I haven't also been like super immersed in the Chiron myth because how I, I'll, I'll just say how I approach it a lot is I, I, you know, l learn about an influence. Let's say Chiron, you know, somebody says it's a wounded healer, our deepest of wounds. Then what I do is I take it to the streets. I take it to the material, practical, earthly streets of Okay, I ask this person, that person, is that true? Is, you know, I ask for proof and proof and proof. And when I get in, in you know, oh. enough of it, that is right. how I approach it. And then you can bring in the myth a little bit and you can start doing <laughs> other right. things. So I, that's like, how I approach it. you're like it. about the anecdotal sort of experience that you're having in your life of, is this really the way? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We'll just. I had. I, I have to. I have to digest it. Right. Well, because it's like it's sort of like uh, I guess like um, you can have a research study, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's a good example. So, so <laughs> the studies, the studies say that the moon mm -hmm. does not influence hospitals and emergency rooms. That on a it full moon. Influence. People are not, okay, but the research and the studies that they've done on it say, nope, no correlation. But you ask any emergency room nurse, they will tell you, hell yeah, it does. So um, that would be their anecdotal experience, right? Like their, their actual real experience of the moon affects the emergency room and people. This is literally one of the things I wanted to say again about the moon. Because I have it by third party, so I'm not sure how um, viable this is. But one of the people who was, let's say, connected to people, at least here in Estonia, he mentioned to me when I was talking about the um, moon cycles, he mentioned to me that in our emergency rooms, they even have more staff during full moons to be, you know, literally to handle all of that because wow. they know it is the shit is going to hit it's the fan legit. basically it's legit. or new moon it's, yeah it's, it's too it's legit, legit to quit <laughs> so don't don't disregard it guys so chiron let's let's say go into chiron let's circle back <laughs> okay so you took chiron to the streets and this is what you found. yeah basically so both pluto and chiron deepest wound very painful things um and this is literally going to happen for us during the new moon, which means to me um, a lot of that new moon is about, let's say, releasing our inner wounds related to taking action and ambition 
and you can also if you want to go very personal guys you need to go into a natal chart and, and see what house this new moon is in but if we're talking about general in aries it's a lot about taking action it's a lot about taking physical action and our inner and outer ambition as well i think you can hear my son <laughs> talking in the background he's, he's very <laughs> active today <laughs> He's probably, you know, He's most the likely going to. <laughs> God, God, I love him. Um, but anyway, <laughs> good. Um, it, it's a lot about our inner ambition wounds and taking action wounds. So if you, if you, you know, notice yourself, like, should I take action? Should I? Oh, I'm scared of taking action. I'm, you know scared of putting my physical action into the world and being ambitious and wanting to achieve and 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 getting those things done and if you notice yourself in those pains of oh i don't know if i should this is guys a time to let this thing go and yes uncomfortable really? because there are there is pain and emotional reactions there but a time to do it as well okay so we're talking about april 1st mostly hey with this you're going I mean, to feel it when definitely we're talking 30, astrology, 31st. when we are mm -hmm. talking astrology it's going to be in amongst all the days so sort of like whatever you take from this is you know just what you're meant to hear and what you're meant to receive we i i compartmentalize on each day just so that it, it's like kind of gives you a grasp of like where we are at in the week but also it's constant. It's constantly shifting, constantly moving. Everybody's lives are different, which is interesting. So April 1st, April Fool's Day, don't get fooled, for one, <laughs> when you wake up and the radio station's like, oh my god, all the tires have gone flat on whatever. No, it's not true. Don't get fooled. Um, intuitively, I felt white dove. And it was like this this release i i mean i i i I, <laughs> I feel that there is a surrender in this there's a a, an, a certain amount of peace on noah's ark when they when noah was like chilling and he wanted to know if land was was done yes I freaking read the Bible. Wanted to know mm -hmm. what was in there. Mm -hmm. When he's chilling, he like lets the dove go, and the dove comes back with the olive branch, and that's like the symbol of like, okay, we made it. This is, but guys, you can't. I think it's very hard to take action here if you don't have the release before. Uh, if mm -hmm. you don't shed the the load you've been carrying that the wounds you've been carrying and Aries, you know makes it quick can make Aries can make it quick actually it's like i'm done i'm, I'm done with this so it can be I'm easy sharpening. yeah it, it can be easy. a little bit easier i hope it's easy i'm personally a little bit of uh, of a different <laughs> uh idea it probably won't be easy <laughs> Hey. <laughs> <laughs> i know oh, it, i okay. know you know guys guys i know when it, where it is in my personal little chart as well so i know it won't be personally easy for me so i, I might be a little bit biased here so um but hopefully let it go. it's e easier how long, how for long you. are you gonna whip and punish yourself and tell yourself that you're bad or whatever it is that you tell yourself how long are you gonna do that for how long can you do that for how long can you actually sustain that in your mind I would say no. I, I would say you're gonna get sick, probably. Most likely, but high probability. I, I can't say guaranteed here. I would say. Yeah, we're 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 but... staying away from the guarantee. <laughs> we're not stamping that. <laughs> I think we overused that one, but. But like this I don't is, know, um... Men even mentally sick. You know, mentally you're gonna have to deal with some crap if you continue to be mean to yourself, which you shouldn't because you're awesome. Oh, I want to end this and then segue into something else um, by saying that it can be also your masculine, masculine male side of the very, you know, kind of aggressive 
that seems sometimes aggressive, but it's like, you know, all about that taking action and being ambitious in the world. Like the male energy side of things can be a little bit triggered as well. You know, am I doing, am I doing, uh, am I making the right decisions? Am I making the right actions? Am I taking the right actions? Can be. Could we also say also like, here. am I, am I being a good provider? Am I being a good, this type of role? Or would that be more associated with Venus? Mm, I wouldn't say Venus. A little bit Mars, yes. Um, also, Sun and Saturn even together. Like Sun, Saturn, Mars, I would say all are a little bit associated with. Am I good? Am I good provider? Am I yes, building the foundations? Right. I'm asking those questions. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's freaking do the seg of the way. <laughs> <laughs> God. What a weird <laughs> word. <laughs> and like, I actually really just like personally word. really like saying it. So I kind of like bust Me it too. out a lot when we talk. <laughs> what is happening? Can't remember what is happening. Okay, well, while you find this, I will oh, say okay. that yeah. the 2nd of April is random. Random. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. Oops. Okay, random. Hmm. God. And when I, I see it, I see like lots of different colors and lots of different like sort of situations that maybe you didn't think that you would find yourself in somewhat mm -hmm. of. And I don't get that these are horrible situations. I get that these are actually really good situations. Because if you've been doing your letting go, you've been doing your, like, asking for things, especially with this Mercury Pisces sort of situation, that day we had the fantastic, like, you're going to be starting, like, don't be surprised if your life does start to change for the better, if you are actually putting in the, oh, if you're watching on YouTube, cat. my cat is right there, and he's so cute. Can you not, though? <laughs> 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 freaked him out um yeah and and uh, like any any situation that's been good for me has been completely out of the freaking blue hmm interesting i don't know what to say exactly that's okay Carry on with the astrology. Just <laughs> I'm just picking up on something. So and it could be for like one I specific know. person. I don't know. If this helps one person, I'm happy with that. I have a story. I, uh, I can tell a story, but I don't want this to go for too long. Tell a story. Tell okay. a story. It was one time when I used to work up north shoveling snow. Yes, I shoveled snow up north in Canada. I was flying home because I worked out of town. I was flying home and I was at the airport and I was drunk because what do you do when you go home? You get airport drunk, of course. This was the thing. So I'm like doing my thing, hanging out, whatever. And I see this like old guy, sorry, elderly man. <laughs> he was he was messing around with his phone and I was like, what the hell? Like. He looks like he needs some help. Probably I'm the only one seeing this, so I should probably help him. And I was bold because I was under the influence, of course. So anyways, I go up to him and I'm like, hey, uh, you look like you're having trouble with your phone. Can I help you? And him and his wife are like, just like so obviously relieved that a young person was going to help them. Because <laughs> I was only like 20 at the time. So anyways, he uh, needed to email his daughter because he was, they had been away for like months and so blah, blah, blah. Do you want to know what I did with their phone to get their email to work? I turned it off and then turned it back on. <laughs> that that's, was it. That's, that's like the card. That's the rule. Over 50% of the time. Right. So I did that and it was like basically nothing. But they got the ride home and all that stuff. Anyways, he gives me his card and he's like, can you call me because you've helped me? Can you call me? Um, you know, we've both lived in the same city. Can you call me and um, I'll have a gift for you in like six, seven weeks. And I was like, what? Like, 
okay. So I, I, I think I actually emailed him. Emailed him. I was like, hey, like, this is the girl from the airport. I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, okay, this is way too cool. I have to, I have exactly. to have a story for her life <laughs> by doing this. So me and my boyfriend at the time, we ended up going to his house. Turns out he was like this crazy rich geologist and he went to a gemstone show and bought me these amazing aquamarine earrings. Oh yeah, because he had asked what my birthday was. And March is the birthstone is aquamarine. So he these freaking gigantic aquamarine earrings, like they're insane. And this whole gift basket of stuff, like wine from his winery that he like made himself. And he's this really eclectic guy. So we go to his house and it's like this crazy winery and like all these crazy crystals and rocks everywhere. And I was like, wow, this is freaking insane. And he made a name for himself because he found, a, because of the rocks, he found um, a diamond mine for someone. Yeah, so, like, I just followed that little feeling, like, oh, I should probably, you know, I'm not thinking I'm gonna get anything out of this. I'm like, I'm gonna help these poor people with their phone, <laughs> like, whatever. Meanwhile, you know, this whole bigger pit thing is playing out, and, I like, I still have the earrings, and when I wear them, I'm just like, all right, let's let something magical happen. That's a freaking amazing story. <laughs> I'm glad you shared it. <laughs> It's really good. Yeah, it, it's one of God. my, it's probably like one of my coolest stories. Like I have other cool stories, but that's probably like the most, that was pivotal for me in my life of like, wow, cool stuff can happen like that. Like far-fetched. Um, and guys, you know, the only reason, you know, you don't need to start helping people <laughs> because you <don't> think, <laughs> you think you're there, they're going to be millionaires and they're going to give you stuff. That's not the point of the story, but you know help uh, help people out you know random it, you never random. freaking know what situation you might be in and like think of it as being for the better because why not yeah anything cool in the astrology for <laughs> april 2nd <laughs> there is there is one thing actually that's very cool and um i have luckily have this natally interestingly enough but uh, Sun and Mercury are going to be in a Kazemi. This means a very, very I, I like close that word. That is a pretty darn cool word. Word, And this means in practical early terms that they're going to be in, in very tight conjunctions or even more in earthly terms that Mercury, the messenger of, of the gods, is going to be in council with the king, the sun, the king of the our... Sun solar system so this means very often and especially in this case because sun is super strong in aries yes chiron you know our pain can a little bit interject here but mercury is is the ideas the things we we say the, the things we think about and it, it's in council with the sun and sun is our creativity and this is the time to get those very good interesting creative ideas to let's say move forward with later on as well because we're in in this new moon and it's giving still the ideas for us to to you know start putting into practical um, material reality so guys remember this day and you know the new moon in general write these ideas down the, these ideas that mm. you are getting these are good ideas. These so are you very, have, you very have this good natally. Ideas. So is this why your I book is like this. off the charts awesome? Probably. <laughs> They're like, I don't know I would, if I can I, say yes to this. <laughs> I would say it is. I would cool. say I, I actually would say it is, and it is. But this book, you know, I would say this book isn't. It is about ideas, but it isn't like you know, a very very left brain. Uh, kind of book as well you know you know orderly list of do this um it's it's a, it's a, i would say it's a very deep emotional book that will open up a lot of um deeper matters for you um wow. yeah cool 
So wherever you are listening to this right now, say the word Kazemi out loud right now. Say and it. go buy my book, guys. <laughs> then go buy Ian's book. <laughs> um, uh, that's freaking, so ideas. Ideas Definitely. that are going to come through. Okay, and this is something, like, so everyone complains when Mercury's in retrograde, and of course, because it's really crappy sometimes. But we always have to remember, I think, that Mercury is the messenger of the gods. Like, when it's not in retrograde, like, Mercury's killing it. Mercury's bringing good, sh good stuff. I would say here... Although Mercury retrograde brings a lot of difficulties as well to shift through, the amount of amazing ideas I get during Mercury retrogrades is off the charts. It's literally freaking one of that is one of the deepest reasons I really love Mercury retrograde. It's the best ideas I get. It's like wow. the most amazing like and, and then I can, you know, take action with them later. So that's cool. You know, the, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was it's not say, only like, bad. I think, yeah, and 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 this is, I think, one of just like, <laughs> I don't want to say like toxic astrology, but you know, mm -hmm. we've touched on it before, where it's there's not not everything's inherently bad or negative or whatever. There's always going to be a balance. I would definitely agree, and, and it's a lot about how we learn to use the energies of the planets and how we shift and navigate these, the planets as well, because they're they're not here to make us victims. We are, they are here to to let's say tell a story, tell the energetic story, but it's a matter of how you use that energetic story, because during if you go <clears throat> deep into Mercury retrograde and you start, you know. Uh, let's say writing down ideas putting in the effort putting in the work where mercury is transiting through you're actually going to get a lot of good results as well later on yes a little with a little bit of annoyance during the period i would say i like it cool <clears throat> sounds like a good uh, place to sort of segue out <laughs> I, I was wondering why weren't you using that word? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was going to, but I was going to be tricksy about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we hope you enjoyed listening and we hope you got a lot out of it. Um, we're pumped if you made it to this point in the episode. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And if, if, you, if there's anything you learned from this episode, I hope this is the fact that Mercedes doesn't really listen to Limp Bizkit and doesn't know the songs. So just remember that. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Could, yeah, that could... bus, that, feel, that bus feels really good. <laughs> Love it. Love being under a bus. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about when I say that, right? <laughs> okay all, in all seriousness um i couldn't help it i mean it's it, it's, it's going to be a pretty intense week i would say um with the new moon with everything building up um so okay to recap do your quick recap do your yeah. um oh, man there's a lot of release emotional of releasing yeah yeah um, I'm gonna have to think of a band that is really popular that you don't listen to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then you can do. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> the shade. The shade will come. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for listening. Watching. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed. We hope you made it to this point. We're glad you're here. Thanks again. Thank Peace you so out. much.